Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. Yes, the setting is a little different today. I am outside in the backyard because it is a beautiful day here. The wind is blowing. It's probably about 90, but it's, it's wonderful compared to what it's been lately. So I am soaking it up as much as possible, but I did have a reason to get on today. There is a great debate going on right now on whether to keep your shield on your trimmer or take it off. And I think this is because a guy came out with a video and I'm not going to address everything he said, but I will tell you from my perspective as being somebody who works on them and sees what happens when you do take the shield off, give you a little input on uh, my side of things. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. Now, why am I making this video other than the tons of comments I got in saying that there was forums about this discussion and about, I'm sure, this guy's video that was put out on whether to do it or not and what I think about it from my point of you know, perspective since I work on probably about 400 trimmers a year. And the majority of commercial people that bring their trimmers in have removed their covers. And so obviously there's a reason for this. It saves them on time. They are able to get a bit bigger swath. Hopefully they're using better protection while they're trimmings because in this guy's video, his last comment was he's only been nailed with a rock in the forehead once where blood was gushing down his face. So <laughs> I just want y'all to be careful. Either way you're doing it, make sure to wear your protective gear, safety goggles, face shield if you're, you know, are, are super afraid of it because this is, you know, spinning at thousands of RPMs and can definitely do some damage. But really what I'm going to go over today is what I see, you know, at the shop. How much damage does it do to a trimmer, realistically, if you take your shield off? And the answer might surprise you. Now, if you are using a curve shaft, I really do not recommend taking the shield off. In fact, there's some of them, some of the new steels, the head part is built in, you know, to where you have to have the shield on for it to connect correctly. There's lots of trimmers that the whole base of the head will not work if you remove your shroud. So I wouldn't even do it on a curved shaft. Now we're just talking straight shaft. If you've got tons of trimming to do, you've got to knock it out. Or if you're commercial, you might be the ones taking your shields off. So this week I had a customer, a commercial customer, bring in their Husqvarna trimmer with the shield off and it is making a terrible sound coming out of the end from the gear head. And so I thought it'd be a good time to make this video. smokes so my cousin lives next door and uh, I smelt fire <laughs> and smoke and turned around and the whole place was smoked up and I was like oh no so I ran and got the fire extinguisher and ran over to his house he's just burning weeds on the fence thank goodness <laughs> so I was like oh no <laughs> Ooh, okay back to the show <laughs> Now, if you are someone who's actually going to remove the shield off your trimmer, you're going to have a straight shaft that's pretty heavy duty that you have either, you know, you're using commercially or you have a ton to do around your house. That means that you're going to probably drop a dime on a, you know, three to $400 trimmer. It's going to definitely be a steel, an Echo, a Husqvarna, Red Max, something like that. And I'll tell you what I see out of all four of them brands the most. Now the one that I see the least is the Red Max, and that's only because they're just not sold that often here. Um, they seem to be really good trimmers, but I just don't see them enough to actually give you a consensus on what breaks on them the most because I only see maybe two or three every single year. Now let's talk Shindalas. They were the best trimmer ever made. I have a T242 and a T282, depending on what kind of job I want to get done, and hands down, anybody that's owned one will tell you they were amazing. But to tell you the truth, those were probably the most common gearheads I ever had to replace, whether the shield was on or off. They had an issue. I don't know if they just you know, ran at such high RPMs or whatever. They wore out. I did have to do warranties on those um, quite a few times. Now, Shindawa and Echo are actually the same company now. So if you buy a Shindawa, it is actually an Echo, has an Echo engine. The only difference is they did stick with the throttle control, same design where it's got the 
the throttle trigger that still pokes out of the handle area. Some people like that. The Echoes have a more enclosed design where the whole trigger goes up into the handle. Um, and the gearhead. The gearhead is still different on the Shindawas than it is the Echoes. So I sort of just quit selling the Shindawas at the shop and stick with the Echoes because I have never had to replace a gearhead on an Echo in 11 years. Never have had to, whether the shield was on or off. And I'm trying to think, but it's probably only been a handful of times I've ever had to replace a clutch on an Echo. They're just really well made. Now, steels, they're a different story. And if you watch any YouTuber that fixes small engines, you will know that the steels, they got clutch issues. And if you have a clutch issue, I will leave a link to the video right up above showing you how to replace your clutch. It's super simple. Hopefully that'll save you some time, money, and frustration. So when it comes to steel, I have to admit, whether the shield's off or on, I have not seen that many gearheads go off. Now, when you spend three to $400 on a trimmer, if you are a homeowner, that trimmer, if you properly maintain it, will last you 10 to 15 years. Even the ones coming out today, they are going to last a long time. Commercial people, they know that they're going to be re-upping and buying a new trimmer every couple of years because they use it every single day. So you have to take that into account when you watch a commercial landscape or doing a video about these trimmers is that they're not going to be, you know, they don't care about the longevity of this trimmer because they, they plan on riding it till it dies and buying another one. If you're a homeowner and you want the trimmer to last as long as possible, you're going to want to leave the shield on. So that leads us into Husqvarna's. And before I get to fixing this Husqvarna that does have a gearhead issue or a clutch issue because the shield hasn't been on it, I wanna tell you about this really cool saving money trick. If your gearhead is out, the, when you go to the store, to one of your local dealers and get a price for a gearhead, they are usually upwards of $100, 100 to $140. And that's like half the price of the trimmer. But here's the trick. Almost every model of trimmer that you get today, you can get also the same model in a split boom design where the, the shaft comes apart right here where you can put attachments on it. If you need a gearhead, instead of buying just the gearhead alone that's like super expensive, find out what the split boom price is. Just like in the Echo, if I sell, if I, I needed an Echo gearhead, it's gonna be 120 bucks. But I sell the entire split boom for the same model trimmer for $99, a straight shaft end with a shield, with a gear head, and a $35 speed feed head on it. You get all of that for $99.99. Ain't that something? It's the same way with steels, and I'm sure it's gonna be the same way with the Husqvarna's. All you have to do is buy the whole end for a split boom, and you get it probably $30 to $40 cheaper than it would for just the gear head. All right, enough of me blabbing. We've come to the consensus that, you know, either a uh, trimmer is going to wear out just because it's gonna wear out anyways, or that, you know, it's not gonna wear out because it's made well. Some things are just gonna break, like, you know, the steel clutches. They're gonna go out no matter what. Some things are gonna last forever. Now on the Husqvarna's, it's a little different. I can tell you from the ones that I see come into the shop that if you don't have the shield on some of these newer ones, you're going to destroy your trimmer. Let me show you why. Okay, so I got a tail of three trimmers here. Now this thing looks scary, but I really just use it for, you know, demonstrations. This is the, you know, 128 LD that they sold at the big box stores. Everybody in the world had one. And it actually had a different kind of gear head than the newer trimmers have today. Now, both of these trimmers here have the same gear head. One is with the um, shield left on. I have this trimmer because it's brand new and the customer burned it up and just gave it to me, so that was awesome. And this one is the one that we're going to be fixing because uh, the shield is off and it's making a terrible sound coming out of the gear head. Now, on these older Husqvarna trimmers, I don't know if you can notice here, but this bracket that holds on the shield has this little prong that goes up into the back of the gear head, which actually gives it stability because on the side here, there's a little screw that goes into the side of the metal shaft. Now there's a one screw that holds it just from compression down at the bottom, but this screw actually goes and keeps it in place where it needs to be. 
And what happens is whenever you take these shields off, and I've seen this a ton of times, if you take these shields off, this is actually giving it that extra, you know, stability to stay where it's supposed to be. So if this is gone, every time you rev your trimmer up, it jerks slightly every time. So it's ripping the hole out that this goes in. And eventually it's just going to, you know, completely rip the hole out that this screw goes in, keeping it where it's supposed to go. And you're going to have to buy a new shaft. So I highly recommend, you know, this is a homeowner brand. Do not remove the shield on this trimmer. That's the 128 LD. Now it's the same thing on these newer trimmers. Now look at that extra stability that it's using with this shield. It has this wraparound bracket that connects into this screw on the side. See the screw is still here on this one, but it needs this extra stability to hold. I mean, it, this is wrapped around this whole thing to keep it from jerking it out. So they knew that there was an issue with that one because even with that, eventually I've seen them to where they start wearing a hole in the side here to, from it jerking over. So even with that bracket still on there, this had an issue. But these ones, they, they tried to avoid that with this extra reinforcement here. So that's one reason to keep the shield on your Hoofkavarna trimmer. So let me show you why the customer brought it in. So just to make sure that it wasn't his raggedy old speed feed head that's doing it, I went ahead and put my speed feed head on it from my trimmer that I know is not making some weird sound. And let's see if it does the same thing. Did you hear that tapping sound like something is hitting or grinding or something? Yeah, the customer wants to know, you know, what's wrong with it. And I can't tell if it's the actual gear head yet or the clutch. So first I'm going to take off his gear head and look inside and see what it looks like. Everything in here. It still looks connected. Sometimes you can see that these break out in the center and they'll start making a weird sound, but this one still seems to be just fine. The steels are real bad about that. If you can hear it uh, like metal clanging down at your head, this outer ring will break from the center and you'll need to replace that. It'll still work, but you'll, you know, we'll have that sound. So we're going to take off our gear head. T27 to take the screw out of the side. Going to loosen up the bottom. And it should just slide right off. Just like that. Now that I've got the head off and the gear head off, I check the shaft and the, the spline still look really good on the end of the shaft. This does have a steel drive shaft, so that's pretty awesome for this machine. It, it's not moving around any. There's a, um, a retainer in here that keeps it in place so it doesn't just flop around back and forth. So I know that that's not what's making the sound. Now the gear head itself actually still looks fine. Everything looks good inside. The splines look fine. When I turn it, everything's spinning freely in there. This feels good. There is no resistance. So you might find this interesting because I went ahead and looked up some parts for this thing. Check this out. So the gear head by itself is $159. But if you get the exact same gear head on the combi unit with a shield and an entirely brand new head, it's only $119. What a savings, huh? 
All you have to do is take it off that shaft from the combi unit, pop it on yours. Unfortunately, I don't think that the gearhead has anything to do with why this machine's making that sound. In the beginning, when I first started it up, did you remember this? Hear how the head just keeps spinning and doesn't ever stop? That's a sign that the clutch is out. So the clutch is about $41 and labor for me to replace it is 40 bucks. But does the customer really want me to do it yet? I mean, the machine is still working. It does make sort of a, you know, weird sound, but a lot of times you, commercial people, you might just want to ride it until it dies and then get it fixed. It's not going to destroy anything else from the clutch being out like that. It's just going to be sort of a nuisance. So I'm going to have to get back with the customer and find out if they want a new clutch or not. Now, the reason that the clutches do that is the springs will stretch out and they'll be constantly engaged and that way the head will never stop spinning because the clutch won't be able to retract while it's in idle. Now, did running it with the shield off do this? I don't know. I have no idea. It might have done it with, you know, the shield on. It's definitely a possibility. I have no clue, really, if it messed it up or not, but you never know. Now let's talk warranty. Now the guy in this video, he obviously only buys his Husqvarna trimmers from a big box store and he had talked about getting an extended warranty. I don't know anything about extended warranties. I just know about the warranty that actually comes with these units. They have a manufacturer defect warranty. So whenever you buy something, everything is not covered under warranty. It does cover manufacturer defects, which includes your gearhead, your shaft, your clutch. And I know with Echo, with a homeowner, it's five years. I think with steel, it's four years for a homeowner and commercial get one or two if you buy the oil or whatever, but can tell you for a hundred percent fact that if you have a homeowner warranty for five years on an Echo and your clutch or your gearhead goes out in that five years, I fix it for free under warranty. But if your shield's off, sorry, <laughs> I can't. So thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us at Instagram at TheRealChicanic or find us at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks and have a great day.